Hello there, my name is Ismael, welcome to another Blender Daily Tip and uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, how I made this uh, pillow here uh, in Blender 2.8. Uh, so yeah, we're going to also be looking at how I made this rope that wraps around the pillow or cushion and then maybe these whatever they are called and uh, uh, yeah, that's it. So let's get started. Uh, I'm going to use uh, the Blender uh, cloth simulation to create uh, the, pillow, the pillow and then yeah, let's get started with that. I'll just add a cube, I'll scale it vertically, uh, like that. I will need to give it a few subdivisions so, so that we have enough resolution for uh, the cloth simulator. Uh, let me add a little bit more than that. And uh, also make sure that uh, the polygons you create are even, uh, so they are more of squares uh, than rectangles. So I think I can add another loop here to make them squares uh, rather than rectangles as uh, they were like that. Uh, so now that we have that we can go and uh, start working with the cloth simulator. So if I go to the physics system I can add a cloth modifier and then if you play back uh, the cloth will just fall down. So we don't want that. We want it to stay around uh, in space so I will re remove the gravity uh, so that it stays suspended in space. And now to make it kind of pump air in it or uh, inflate it, uh, we need to add a force field. So I'll add shift A force field and then add a force field. Uh, we need to make sure that this force field is inside uh, the cube and uh, the way we do that is uh, just select the, the cube and then shift A, shift S, cursor to selected and then select uh, the force, shift S, selection to cursor. Uh, this will make sure that uh, the force field is exactly in the middle of uh, the of the of the mesh and what it will do is that uh, when it's created, generating this force it will kind of act like a force pushing out on every side of uh, the the cushion kind of creating the effect of air being pushed in compressed in, uh, yeah being pushed into uh, the uh, the mesh uh, like inflating it so uh, let me get rid of these notes. Great. Uh, so now that we have that, we can start uh, play back and see what happens. Uh, you don't really see much going on here uh, because uh, the force we are using, I can see if we go to airframe, you can see there is something moving here, but uh, uh, the force we are using is not enough uh, to create uh, that inflation we need. So let's change go to the, select the force and then go to the physics tab and increase the force to around 100 give it a strength of 100 and uh, play back again sometimes you need uh, the timeline to first play all the way through and uh, for the for this to work correctly so you can see what we're having i'm also going to turn on uh, I'm, go I'm also going to shade smooth uh, this mesh so that you can see what we are getting so let's see this. it's a bit slow I'm not sure why and uh, the force is doesn't seem to be enough or it's not inflating it fast enough so let me increase that a bit and see and uh, if you look closely uh, there's kind of, uh, there's a s somewhat kind of ladder geometry going on here can see how it's kind of it's like steps going on here uh, maybe the polygons the, the, the polygon count is not enough uh, but what I found is an easier way to kind of remove that is uh, by changing the blending mode uh, the bending model here from angular to linear uh, that will get uh, get rid of uh, that system uh, my understanding is that uh, the angular model is the newer version and it's supposed to produce better results but uh, in this instance it's not giving me the, the results uh, that I want so I'm changing back to the linear model and uh, that should reduce on the you can see how it's more smooth uh, than what we had when we are using angular and I also guess maybe the polygon count I have here is not enough but uh, because this is a simple tutorial I don't want to uh, slow my simulation too much so uh, let me do this again so that you can see the difference we have here so this is angular huh. 
guess the effect is not as bad as I had it in my uh, when I was doing the first test or when I was making uh, this version here it was too obvious uh, those steps that we, that uh, were being created so I changed it to linear and uh, that reduced that effect so if you're having that uh, try playing around with the bending model here and the physical properties uh, so let me switch to linear because it works it worked better for me last time so So just wait for it to inflate to something that you see, you think is better. I think that is good enough. And now you can apply the cloth simulator, remove the force as well, and you have yourself a pillow. So after that, then you can, let's look at how to make this rope here. Uh, that is the easiest part of the tutorial. Just start with a curve, shift A, shift A, curve move it outside, I'll scale it down a bit, and then go to the modifiers and turn on the screw modifier. Now uh, is that, screw, 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 screw here, and uh, increase uh, the screw value, uh, to something like that. I will get something like a cylinder like this, and then go to edit mode, select, make sure that you have everything selected, rotate that in the X direction by 90 degrees, in the X axis by 90 degrees, you can see what we're having. Uh, if it's too straight like this, you can reduce uh, your screw down until you get uh, the length you want. Uh, then you can just go in and start increasing the iterations and then you will have a rope. See how that is, how easy that is. And, um, yeah, so now what we're left with is to make this wrap around uh, the cylinder. So to do, sorry, to wrap around uh, the cushion. So what we do is just select a, a, a ring, I think it's called a ring, uh, that goes around uh, the, the pillow like this. And uh, the shortcut I was using here was I, hold a, I held down Alt and then uh, left clicked one of the edge loop uh, to get uh, that here. And then just use Shift D to duplicate that around and then hit P uh, to separate it from the object. Uh, let me hide this and uh, now this is the profile we're left with. So what we need is to kind of use this, use this here as the curve object uh, for this to follow. Uh, so we need to convert this into a curve object because right now it's a mesh. Uh, so just go under the object uh, menu, then go to convert to, convert it to a curve, and you'll see that uh, it will change uh, from a mesh to a curve, and uh, you'll have access to the curve settings. So we don't need really, we don't really need to go there. So what we just need to to do is uh, select this, go to the modifiers and uh, add a curve modifier. Uh, make sure the curve is above the screw because uh, otherwise uh, it won't work as uh, the, this, the uh, otherwise it won't work like this. So just select uh, the curve. Uh, another thing just to make sure that uh, everything works uh, easily, I uh, just select the this profile. I'll just call it a profile. Shift S. Hold down Shift S. Then move your cursor to selection, uh, so that is there, and then snap this object, uh, so that is in center or at the pivot point of the uh, 3D cursor. That will help you eliminate the work you have to do to align uh, this curve, uh, this object here, to the curve. So select this, shift S, selection to cursor, and then you can select uh, this as the curve object. And uh, now what is left to do is uh, scale this down and I find the right alignment. And I think this is, if you're getting a flat, something like this, uh, try rotating it in different axes until you get uh, the right orientation. So it can be tricky sometimes. So let's see, let me rotate X, 90. Let's try Y, let's try I was having the same issue last time, so let's first turn this into unlock this so that it's not going around. And uh, let's see. Another thing you can try is uh, first apply the, rock, the scale of this object, uh, this here, uh, this curve, and uh, that should at least fix uh, the scale for this here. And now you can uh, find the right rotation. 
uh, you will have to play around with your own object, object rotation to get uh, the right rotation. I think mine is uh, the Z axis, and uh, then uh, we can increase uh, the iterations here so that this is longer. And uh, if you select the curve, you can see it starts here and ends here, but uh, sometimes you can, but uh, if you hold on out C, you can close uh, that gap so that it's a complete loop. And then now, let me first hide this. Now, when we increase the iterations, uh, this will just go around all the way. So I'm going to scale this up uh, because you can see the iterations end at 100 and uh, so that we get uh, the final thing connecting to do something like that. Uh, another thing is that uh, uh, because I want to keep the polygon count really down uh, because we have a lot of iterations and uh, that increases the polygon count and uh, your CPU usage. Uh, so let's select the object, go to the uh, curve settings and reduce uh, the resolution. I think a resolution of three is enough. And I also go under geometry and increase, reduce uh, the resolution there as well. You can see, actually that doesn't really do much. Uh, the other resolution you need to do, uh, re you need to reduce is under uh, the screw settings. Uh, so render st reduce the render steps here until you see that, uh, until you get something that looks okay. I think this is good enough. Uh, can even get away with yeah, let's go with with uh, five and uh, make sure the render steps are also are the same. So yeah, we have something like that. I guess no, no, I, I think that's good enough. Yeah, so that's how you do that. Uh, the not the other parts of the tutorial, like uh, making the material and uh, this part here, you can just go watch uh, the time lapse. I'll be uploading it on my second uh, YouTube channel. Uh, blender money i'll be leaving a link in the description so that if you are interested in looking at that watching that you can go watch that uh, so yeah thank you for watching